Today, the virtual world that exists online is quite separate from our physical reality. We play, you know, maybe you play games, I don't play games, but you know, when you play a game, you can get really sucked into it, but it's still sort of sitting there on a screen, and there's this fairly obvious sort of real world that surrounds you. Even if you get five monitors and surround your desk with them, you know, there's this sense that I'm still in the real world, and what I'm doing is playing a game, and again, I can really sucked into it, but there's a screen there, and the screen is this sort of portal between me and the virtual world of cyberspace. In the future, I'm sure we're going to see these worlds come together uh, much more closely. And I think we'll see two things. Uh, one thing is we're going to see uh, much more immersive experiences in these virtual worlds that we can build online. The second thing is we're going to see more of an interplay and a juxtaposition between the virtual world and the real world. Virtual reality sort of promises the former. It gives you the sense of being able to really immerse yourself in these online experiences. So, you know, being able to sort of recreate your experience of the physical world where when I move, you know, things move around me and, you know, I can sort of see all my peripheral vision, you know, as I move my head around, I'm, I'm looking at different things, you know, trying to essentially recreate the, um, the experience of being in the physical world in a virtual space. And obviously, you know, the, the visual component of that is maybe the easiest, visual auto, auditory components are the easiest part. Uh, how we're gonna solve things like touch, like if I'm in a virtual reality world and there's a table right here, like how do I prevent somebody from sort of walking through it or whatever, I don't know. Um, but we're definitely seeing, so you know, this year, uh, one of the products I keep seeing advertised on TV all the time is this, is this VR headset. So we're starting to see this. Um, the VR headset I'm talking about, this is not a product pitch in any way. I wouldn't buy this at $100, um, is something that Samsung's selling. And what's interesting about this, in my opinion, is that you actually, um, it, it, it requires your phone. So your phone kind of clips onto this, I guess, and then, the, then, then sort of you strap this to your head. And now what I'm doing is I'm harnessing the phone's display and some of the phone's processing and sensors to provide the visual experience of being in this virtual world. Um, I've never used one of these. I have no idea if they work well or not. Um, but, you know, again, obviously the goal is to try to, you know, um, fool me into thinking that I'm fully immersed in this virtual world that I can now participate in. Uh, Google has a product that Greg assures me is, is not a joke. It's called Google Cardboard. It's, fi it's $15. It's supposed to be $99. Um, but this is pretty much the same idea. It, it allows me to... Um, take my phone and essentially sort of elegantly, I guess you could call that elegant, maybe, strap it to my head, which is sort of, you know, so I can, I can take this and I can create a virtual reality experience by kind of just having it be like this, right? And then as I look around, the phone sensors are going to adjust the screen and I can see things like that. And so it's kind of a neat. Um, it does mean that I can't, apparently can't use my smartphone in my virtual reality world, which is a little sad. I guess I need like a virtual reality smartphone so I can take calls in the virtual reality world and talk to other people. Um, but anyway, but I mean, these are transitional technologies clearly, but I think that more and more, we will see this type of virtual reality being used in a variety of different settings. Um, in the future, you know, maybe you won't actually commute to go to a particular place to work. You'll just, you know, go sit down at your uh, table at your kitchen at home and put on your VR headset, you know, dial into work or whatever, and then be in a virtual reality environment where you can interact with colleagues and have the type of face-to-face -face interactions that I think we started to understand are really important to productivity and creativity and things that so far have been difficult to replicate online. So this is one of the things, you know, that I'm sure we will see more of in the future. And obviously the internet is a big part of this because I don't wanna, you know, strap one of these things to my head if I have totally lost connection with any other person. I mean, what makes, what makes the virtual reality worlds interesting like this, in my opinion, are other people that are gonna be inhabiting them. So if I put on my VR headset to go to work, I'm doing that so I can interact with other people that I want to see and have conversations with and, and talk about new ideas with. Um, so we'll see where this goes. This is obviously very exciting. All that, you know, a lot of the technology is there to do this in a fairly simple way. Again, with sort of visual, sort of overloading the visual and audio inputs that we have. Uh, dealing with other types of things like movement and, you know, the existence of objects in physical space is something that's been much more difficult. Uh, we'll see how that plays out.